Officer down, officer down. 184. That's the number of the total line of duty deaths in the state of New Mexico. Over the last five years, in order, New Mexico State Police Officer Darian Jarrett, Alamogordo Police Officer Anthony Ferguson, Las Cruces Police Officer Jonah Hernandez, and New Mexico State Police Officer Justin Hare, all four of them died after being killed by a deadly weapon. Having that many line of duty deaths in the state of New Mexico, does that alarm you? Absolutely. I spoke with the New Mexico governor's public safety advisor, Benjamin Baker, about the situation as police nationwide continue to face dangerous conditions. Um, I've been a New Mexico uh, law enforcement officer for 27 years, and so I've been to a number of law enforcement line of death violent funerals, and it is a horrible situation, and it is one that needs immediate attention. Following the stabbing death of Las Cruces police officer Jonah Hernandez, LCPD chief Jeremy Story says enough is enough. These things really have to happen in order for us to make a significant impact. Advocating for stronger legislation at the state level to protect officers and their communities. The biggest things I want to see happen soon is dealing with our issues uh, with competency. We see um, probably the majority of problems in that area where People are arrested for a crime, they're found incompetent, and the case gets dismissed. There's no consequence. In most states, there's treatment or there's competency restoration that doesn't exist in New Mexico. We share Chief Story's concerns related to keeping law enforcement safe, keeping our communities safe, and have taken extraordinary measures, particularly in last year's legislative session. One of those measures mentioned was signing Senate Bill 271 into law, a bill focused on pretrial detention, which means if someone is out on conditions for an active felony case and they commit another crime, the judge is allowed to hold that person without bond. By doing things like increasing the penalties for being a felon in possession of firearm, increasing the penalties for those who commit second degree murder against our citizenry, both of which were put forward in this last legislative session, increasing one's ability to remain in custody for safety purposes, which was also signed. On the other side of the governor's work is she has funded two years in a row a comprehensive job task analysis. And what that does is it hires an outside nationally recognized contractor to look at the entire state in the professions of law enforcement and public safety telecommunicators and ascertain is the training methodology meeting the requirements and the needs of the job. Despite the work that's being done, we obviously don't want to shy away from the fact that we have seen several officers die over the last few years. Can you talk about the growth that also needs to be done within this administration? In that portion of our conversation, Baker emphasizing what's in place to try to prevent repeat offenders from acting again, but how it's not necessarily completely addressing the problem. Once you have become a prohibited person by, by being convicted of a felony in the state of New Mexico, you are no longer allowed to pick up firearms. And with increased frequency, we are seeing in our data that felons are not dissuaded, by this requirement and rearm themselves. And so that legislation was designed specifically to attack the problem of violent felons rearming themselves with firearms. The officers came under immediate deadly force um, against their persons within five seconds of stopping the vehicle. Highlighting that the work to fix that issue is not done. We proposed and put forward and supported on this call, on this budget session, one of the most robust, um, maybe even nationwide, felon in possession of firearm criminal penalty enhancements. Um, it did not pass this legislative process, but it contemplated multiple things, not the least of which, in my opinion, is the increase to a mandatory period of incarceration for those who repeatedly refuse to comply with the conditions of their previous felony conviction um, and not arm themselves. Baker noting that he and the governor will continue to work closely with law enforcement leaders across the state like Chief Story to not only address public safety, but to help make sure officers make it back home to their families after every shift. The message is that we have to do something. We can't continue to let it get worse. We can't let it stay the same. We have to, we have to make things better. One is too many, one is intolerable. So yes, it is too much.